I want to start with death and dying because even me, as someone who's a very spiritual person, and I would call myself quite spiritually connected, the only fear I really have, Tina, is of my death. Not necessarily what happens afterwards. I feel pretty confident about that. But my actual death, my last breath, what's that going to be like? And I know people have fear around this and also what happens right after we die. So I thought we could start there and you could give us some information on this. I would be happy to do that because I feel the more educated each of us are in a process that every one of us is going to experience, the less fear can surround the process. I would like to start by expressing the concept that every single person's death is unique. No two are alike, just as we are individuals, our deaths and what happens after death are completely unique to us. And that keeps the uniqueness of the soul intact and it's an important concept. On ghosthelpers.com, I have a video called What Happens When I Die? And it came from the memorial service uh, that I held when my brother died and my, my brother Pierre and I were extremely close. And he was super psychic, super spiritual person. And he looks at me with these soft brown eyes and says, what's going to happen? He had um, colon cancer. And right before he lapsed into a coma, he said, what's going to happen when I die? And I thought, Good Lord, this is the question 100% of us have. We just don't always verbalize it. The answer is that the body is a mechanism. It's a machine. It's a genius machine that could only have been created by the divine, by God. And it's a machine that we all have to have some respect for, even if we don't like ourselves. Our bodies are astounding. And like any machine there is a process when the machine shuts down, when the device, when the mechanism that gives us form and function and the and capability to move my hands and blink my eyes and hug my grandchildren and, and hold my husband's hand of 50 years, that, me that mechanism, this body starts to shut down and it starts in the etheric because I have seen etheric rigor mortis begin to seep into the mortal frame. Everything starts in the etheric and then comes into the physical. Mm. When that happens, the body starts to shut down, like the last person in the building, turn out the lights. So the extremities start first, and then the organs slowly but surely shut down. This is true no matter your cause of death, even if if it's an instantaneous death, it happens in an instantaneous moment. But if death is prolonged, you're in a coma and then things are extended, then you get to see that process more clearly. This process is elegantly described in the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying written by Sogyal Rinpoche. So if someone says, well, where did she get this? I would really like to offer that as a reference book so you don't just have to believe me. When this process takes place, the extremities start to, they just don't work anymore and they start getting cold. It's like that, that's what rigor mortis is. is you, you start to die. And I've had that feeling several times as I faced my own death on more than one occasion and I could feel you can feel it coming as this takes place the organs one by one shut down and the depending on the process whether if you have a massive heart attack that's going to be the first organ to shut down and then the others follow but if that's not the process then uh, septicemia sets in or sepsis or whatever happens to you and your heart stops the heart is the location of the seed atom of the soul. And this seed atom connects to your solar plexus because the solar plexus is the location of your Akka cords. The Akka cords are what connects you to every person you've ever met, every place you've ever been, everything you've ever touched and every experience you have ever had. And that Akka cord is the foundation framework for your Akashic records. Thank you. Okay. I was just wondering. Okay. 
if you don't understand that that critical little process, nothing makes any sense. So once those aka cords are cut, the body dies and the soul begins to exit the body. And that is a universal process, whether it's an instant death, your plane blows up, whatever happens, that is the process. So can I that, can I ask a question? Sure. Is the aka cord the same as what we call the silver cord? The aka cord connects the body to everything that you have had an experience with. The aka cord resides in the seed atom of the soul. The seed atom of the soul is the silver cord that connects the soul to the body. When the body dies, that silver cord is cut and with it leaves the seed atom of the soul encased inside of that are your Akashic records. Okay, interesting, all right. And then as the soul exits the body, those records go with you. You don't stop being who you have always been. If you're a murderer in life, you're going to still be a murderer in death. You're not going to change your personality. A difficult personality doesn't become angelic because they don't have a mortal frame. They're who you've always been. If you are an atheist, you're going to be quite astonished. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because you believe you become compost and you go into darkness. Mm -hmm. And the problem is understanding the physics of the body. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So that which is you, the essence, the energy of you must go somewhere. And when that energy leaves the body, it goes into the fourth dimension. Mm -hmm. So let me take a, a, a quick aside. We live in the third dimension. It's the place of time and space and gravity. You cannot have time without gravity. Gravity anchors you into the moment and gives you the time to have the experiences as you move through the space of your surroundings. And those three are inextricably linked for us to have mortal experiences. When you leave the third dimension, the physicality, you take that energy that is you and you move into the fourth dimension which is a place of no time, no space, and no gravity. It's a different concept. With that concept, then you have some choices. Normally, and normally is certainly a debatable word, in the majority of cases, you see a light, just like the movie Ghost. Patrick Swayze didn't stop being who he had always been. And he was horrified that he, he saw his body there and he couldn't believe it. But he also saw that light, which came several times. And he thought he was still in the third dimension. In the movie, they showed him walking. Well, when you die, you aren't encumbered by needing legs. <laughs> you travel with the speed of thought, which is why when someone you love dies, a beloved grandparent or your parent or whatever, and you feel them standing next to you and they're 5,000 miles away, that's because without time and space, you travel with the speed of thought. So all mm. those people who have felt that, you're correct. You're mm. not crazy. Those things did happen. When my mother died in North Carolina and I was in California, I knew the instant she left her body because she was standing in my kitchen looking at all the renovations I'd done. <laughs> mm. And I could feel her presence there. And I had angels standing by to cross her over, which is, which is another thing that anyone can do. When you do that, when you enter this fourth dimension, this is what is meant in the 23rd Psalm. Lo, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That 23rd Psalm appears in every faith in the world, in some form or another. Every faith has this trying to guide us. The problem is that we didn't know how to interpret it. I think some of the old people who knew this didn't get listened to anymore. You move into this fourth dimension, and if you have seen this light, move immediately into the light. People who say, oh, you know, I want to see how my kids are doing, or, you know, I want to go back to my house. Believe me, 
the quicker you move into the light, the more you will be able to help your family, not the less, because you'll have so much guidance on the other side. And I'm getting to that. If you enjoyed that clip, make sure you check out the full episode on Life Magnetics. This is Tina Irwin, episode 56. We get into all sorts of awesome subjects to include the soul blueprint, soul groups, the difference between incarnating from the fourth dimension and incarnating from the fifth dimension. We get into the full afterlife process, what happens once you go through the light, and so much more. Again, episode 56 of the Life Magnetics podcast available on all podcast platforms. Don't forget to please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, never forget that I have got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys. Bye.